Hey everyone, welcome to Future Press's boss strategy series. My name is Franz, and today we're going to be fighting the Ancient Dragon. This is an optional boss fight. The first thing you should know about it is that you can summon two NPCs to help you out with the fight, if you've met the conditions for them to appear. The second thing you should know is that you should not summon anybody to help you out with this fight, and I'll explain that presently. I'm going to take off my armor for this boss because mobility and stamina regeneration speed are far more important than de uh, defense and damage mitigation. If you take any hit from this boss whatsoever, it is almost guaranteed to kill you. So you want to make sure that you can get out of the way and that you can regenerate your stamina in time to get out of the way again. When you first walk in, give him enough time to start breathing fire directly at you. He'll roar and then he will initiate his attack, and if you are directly in front of him, it will almost always be his forward flame breath. That's a conical flame breath attack, he'll sweep it from side to side, it'll give you an opportunity to hit his feet, and if you're a melee build with no ranged attacks, chances are you're going to be hitting his feet and or his tail for the, the duration of the fight. By standing between his legs underneath him, you can trigger him to use that flame breath attack he did just now, in which he will breathe fire underneath him towards uh, the rear of his body. That's a good opportunity for you to run uh, outside of his feet and hit him a few times. This is his most dangerous attack. He'll leap off the ground, fly into the air, and breathe flames at the ground, and that will strike in a massive circular area of effect. The only way to escape that is to run directly towards the tip of his tail, with a full stamina bar, I might add. Because if you run out of stamina before you get out of the way of that, it'll hit you and you'll die. Also, you don't want to be underneath him when he lands, because if he lands on top of you, you will incur damage and you will die. The reason I recommend not bringing any allies into this fight is, first of all, if you summon NPCs, their AI is useless. They don't really know how to handle a boss this big, and they'll only wander around stupidly and get killed, and you'll just then have to fight a powered-up ancient dragon, which is not something you want to have to deal with. But even if you were to summon human players to help you, problem with that is the boss will randomly switch targets at random times, and that will make it difficult or impossible to anticipate where he is going to attack next. And you want to know where he's going to be aiming that aerial flame breath, because if you can't predict that, you can't avoid it. And if you can't avoid it, you'll get hit by it. And if you get hit by it, you die. Fortunately, as you can see, the boss's physical attacks and his grounded attacks are extremely slow. So they're very easy to avoid. You can get out of the way of them with plenty of time to punish them. Really, the only thing you have to be very careful of is his aerial flame breath. And you don't want to stay too close to his tail, because as you can see, he will do this. He will use a two-hit tail slam, which will strike behind him. Now, you can get very close to the base of his tail and completely avoid that, and then punish him by hitting his tail. His tail will take the full amount of damage from your attacks. Parts of his feet seem to take very heavily reduced amounts of damage, so his tail may be a better bet for consistent damage, but uh, you can attack his toes, and that will usually do the full amount of damage as well. You cannot sever his tail, by the way, so don't attempt to do that, it's just a waste of time. Unless you're targeting his tail in order to do the full amount of damage. But the closer you are to the tip of his tail, the harder it is to avoid the tail smash. So I would advise you guys that the safest place to stand is between his hind legs. Just not when he lands. Whichever side of him you are on, he will rotate the opposite direction in order to face you. As you can see here, I am on now his left side, uh, so he will rotate counterclockwise to face me, whereas when I am on his right side, he will rotate clockwise to face me. The reason that's important is because you want to make sure you have enough room to run all the way towards the tip of his tail when you avoid his aerial flame breath. If he is standing with his back to the edge and his tail hanging over the edge of the battlefield, you won't have enough room to run towards the tip of his tail to get out of the way of his AoE. So you want to make sure to trigger him to rotate in a direction that will give you plenty of room to run towards the tip of his tail. And again, you can do that just by standing on either side of his body. 
Another extremely important thing that you guys need to remember is to leave yourselves enough stamina that you can run away from his aerial flame breath when the time comes. So immediately after he executes a ground attack or any attack other than his flame breath, hit him a few times and then just wait and watch his moves and regen regenerate your stamina until you see him use his next attack and determine that it is not his aerial flame breath. When he does use his uh, aerial flame breath, you can see that as he did just now, he will sort of crouch and give you a brief warning before he leaps into the air. And that period of time is important because that is how he will telegraph his uh, incoming aerial flame breath. And you need to use that time to start running towards the tip of his tail. Because if you don't recognize the attack and see it coming in time, you'll get hit by it. So watch his move, let him use an attack other than his aerial flame breath. When he does, punish it, and then wait and recover your stamina, and watch his move again and wait to see what move he's going to use. And if he uses his aerial flame breath, avoid it. And if he uses another grounded attack, punish him. That's really all there is to it. This boss does not change his behavior or his attack patterns at any point during the fight. He's the same all the way through. So if you can follow this basic formula, chances are you'll be okay. All you have to do is not die, which is simple, right? Now, you can stand in front of the boss to trigger his forward flame breath. I do not recommend trying to do that, because he will alternate his forward flame breath with his aerial flame breath under the exact same conditions. And if he decides to use his aerial flame breath and you're in front of him, it strikes slightly forward. So it can be extremely difficult to get out of the way of that if you are already standing in front of him. It's much easier to avoid if you're standing between his hind legs than if you are in front of his face. I would venture to suggest that the optimal place to stand is right about where I am now, uh, between his hind legs, equidistant from his feet because it will give you the most time and the most room to avoid his attacks while giving you the best access to his weak points. He is vulnerable to most damage types other than fire. Uh, fire will still damage him, but not optimally, so I recommend magic or else lightning. Or just plain physical. Physical is fine too. And dark. Uh, I have been able to poison him although I do not believe that he is vulnerable to bleed, and poisoning him takes uh, a very large number of poison arrows and or throwing daggers. Uh, if you have one of the poison cloud pyromancies, that usually works a bit faster. You can see here that I switched to the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring right before delivering the Killing Blow. That will help maximize on the already considerable number of souls that you get from winning the fight. I'm putting my armor back on here, but all I really used were my rings and my weapons, so you can see here what I, uh, what I won the fight with. You can pause the video at any point to get a closer look and take your time watching, uh, looking at what's, uh, what I used. I'm also going to show you this character's stats. He's soul level 30, so this fight can be done really very low if you can follow the formula without getting hit. We thank you guys for watching this video. We hope it's been helpful. And we will see you guys next time.